So, Mkundelu, I really hope I'm answering your question with the next explanation. Let's have a look. Flying between two locations, they have to give you a departure time and they have to tell you the duration of the flight. It has to be given. All you need to do is to calculate the arrival time at the final destination and consider daylight saving time. That is if it is applicable. All right, first step, we've done this. You are familiar with this already. Whenever you get a calculation like this, you have to work out the time difference and put your answer down and highlight it because you're going to use it later in step three. The second step, very important, rewrite the departure time that was given in the question and plus the duration of the flight to it. That's something you will always do in step two if you use my steps and that is when you want to work out the arrival time. If, however, you were given an arrival time in the question and they want to know what was the original departure time, the only thing you're going to do different in my steps is this plus over here, that one over there will become a minus because now you're basically doing this calculation in the reverse direction. All right, step three, very important. Take the answer from step two. Now, guys, when I say take, I literally mean the answer that you got there, rewrite it. And then you have to decide. This it says all. You have to decide, will I plus or minus the time difference? Which is the answer that you got here from step one? You see why it's important um, to, to write these steps in this sequence? And then, obviously, why should I know if I should plus or minus? It's because you need to know that I fly west or that I fly east to my final location. All right, guys, so let's literally do a typical example of this time zone calculation. It says, a flight departed from Johannesburg, so there's our first location, to New York, all right, on the uh, 24th of July, 2019 at 9 o'clock information given that you're going to start with. Here they say the duration of the flight was 14 hours. The question is calculate the arrival time in New York if New York applies daylight savings. So guys, very important. They say there that New York applies daylight saving time. All right, so let's quickly look at the calculation. Our two locations is Johannesburg and New York. Again, a clean time zone map. We identify our GMT, it's over there. Johannesburg's over here. We go all the way up and you see it's plus two. All right, and then New York is over there. We go all the way up and you see minus five. All right, so we write out step one. Johannesburg is GMT plus two. New York is GMT minus five. You see the symbols plus and minus, that indicates direction, guys. In other words, we add the two together and we get a time difference of seven hours between Johannesburg and New York. Step two says, always take the time of departure. Now we departed, as you can see here, it says from Johannesburg. So take the time of departure, which is Johannesburg, and they given us to, it to us. It was nine o'clock, the 24th of July. 2019, and then, remember the step said, you must add the duration of the flight. Now guys, our flight duration was given to us over there. We have flown for 14 hours, so we add the 14 hours, and our new time now is 11 o'clock, and you can see we went over 12 o'clock midnight, so it becomes 11 o'clock, and the date, very important, the date changes, comes the 25th of July 2019. All right, so guys, basically we have worked out the time difference. That was our step one. Secondly, we have taken our departure time and we added the time that we are flying and now we have a new time. But that new time is still on our watches that we had when we flew from Johannesburg, our South African watch. We still need to find out what's the local time in New York when we arrive there. And that's where step three comes in. All right, so... As I mentioned to you, you literally take the time 
that you got from step two and you rewrite it. So you can see the same one there, 11 o'clock, 25 July, 2019. And now, very important, we're going to use our time difference. That's seven hours that we got from step one. We have to decide, do we minus or do we plus? All right, now guys, let's quickly have a look at the map. We were in Johannesburg. We flew all the way to New York. So the flight is going in a western direction. Therefore, we have to minus. All right, so there's our minus. If we take 11 o'clock minus 7 hours, it gives us 4 o'clock, the 25th of July, 2019. And now you think, whew, I've done my calculation, I'm done, yay, I'm right, hopefully full marks, but you forgot one thing. Remember earlier on I said, the equator divides the earth into a northern and a southern hemisphere. Now I'm, I say, we in South Africa, you know when it's summer and when it's winter in South Africa. So in December, in the summer months, it's warm in South Africa, it's summer, which means December in New York, which is on the other side of the equator, it will be winter. So seasons are different from one another. Okay, that means if we are in July in this question, it is winter in South Africa, which means it's summer in New York. And the question said, apply daylight saving time. With daylight saving time, you have to add one hour to your final answer. Let's have a look at that. To apply daylight saving time, add the one hour. So you rewrite your final answer again. Four o'clock plus the one hour daylight saving time gives us the final answer of five o'clock, the 25th of July, 2019. So guys, that's time zones. That's time zone calculations. Basically, you can use different types of Numbers, you can use different locations on a world map. Sometimes they are nice to you, and on a world map, they indicate the time zones. They show with arrows where the locations are, because some of you might not be familiar with all the locations. But at the end of the day, if you study your steps, and you know how to find the locations on the map, read it up to the top from there, what's the time zone, plus or minus, if you know in which direction you are flying to know whether you're minus or plus, you cannot go wrong on this. So guys, time zone calculations, a lot of fun, but you have to practice it and you have to become familiar with your time zone map. It has been a privilege to be with you today. It was really nice to explain time zones to you, but guys, remember, definitions are very important. If you forget your definitions, it might cost you when you do your calculation.